afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an afternoon of all-star international professional wrestling presented to you by Dale Martin Promotions in conjunction with Joint Promotions. Ladies and gentlemen, your first contest this afternoon is a, an international light heavyweight contest consisting of six five-minute rounds. One fall, one submission, or a knockout to decide the winner. Between on my right and in the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Lagos, Johnny Quango. His opponent on my left and in the blue corner from Lewisham, Bobby Barnes. And ladies and gentlemen, your referee for this afternoon's contest, the international third man, Max Ward. Hello again, Grapple fans. Good afternoon to you and welcome to Pickett's Lock Centre here in Edmonton, London for another freestyle wrestling session. And we start this afternoon's programme with a light heavyweight bout between Johnny Quango of Lagos, Nigeria at 13.7. And he takes on Bobby Barnes of Lewisham, just about the same weight, three pounds in it. And uh, neither of these men have appeared on the small screen for ooh, a year and a half, I'd say, over a year. Max Ward is the ref. And this is a six five minute round contest with one fall, one submission or a knockout to decide. So a double handed wrist lever to Barnes right from the start of this first round of six. Bobby Barnes, you remember, I'm sure, the tag partner of Adrian Street two or three years back. Now Adrian Street's given up the game, apparently. Bobby Barnes is solo. But we haven't seen him on the uh, television for quite a long time. I understand he's been abroad. And already, as early as... The First half of round one, the headbutt to the forehead by Johnny Crane. I must admit, I've never seen uh, Johnny Crane deliver a a headbutt to the forehead that early before. Binds up from the throw very quickly. Quick counter. Figure four leg lock. Back break are not really effective as long as Johnny Crang has got his head on the canvas. <laughs> but number two. And a couple of minutes left in this first round of six. Both 
Both agreeing to the finger in the lock. Dennis Barnes keeps his forehead away from that Johnny Quango butt. Back on from the top, Quango. Barnes taking over a bit now. <laughs> His man was on his knees when that was delivered. And Max Ward uh, makes sure he understands that for the future. Half a minute. Lock position, but on the hand with about eight seconds left. So Barnes through the ropes, and Max Ward having to separate <laughs> already. It could be a little trouble in this bout, one foresees. A bit of needle creeping in this early. As I say, neither man has been. We've uh, seen him on television for quite some time. Bobby Barnes of Lewisham for over a year and a half, I'm sure, since he appeared on television. Still pretty fit and agile. And, two. and away across to the far corner on Quango in no time at all, but he gets a public warning for going too fast on the ropes. Ladies and gentlemen, in round two, the referee has given his first public warning to Bobby Barnes. And Quango won't like this at all. He'll go in with that forehead butt now. He's lining him up, teeing him up, setting his sights for that headbutt. I'm sure Quango does not like that sort of uh, behavior in the ring with his opponent at all. And he generally punishes it with a headbutt. Seeing up again. <laughs> He's really turning that neck. Not very worrying Barnes there. A double leg grab over the top. If he can get it around to back to canvas, he's got a possibility of a reverse double leg Nelson there, but goes for the single arm stretch instead. Even trying the butt from there. Not to the forehead this time, to the chest. Barnes figures the way out is the head scissors, but into the ropes. Perfectly legal, as long as he doesn't re-attack before the man gets up, which he's tempted to do. <laughs> nice for front posting. Didn't even turn him on that swing. Barnes over the top for a cross press. Gets a two, but it's not enough. And another two. And one of the left arm is actually operating on the throat. But the referee not happy about it. And has his own way of making sure that Barnes gets off it. 
Oh, he must be in for a few headbutts now, Barnes. He really must. Oh, oh yes. And both of them go down. Three, four. And which one will make it? Six, seven, eight. And Barnes the stronger. He thinks he's got it. No, he hasn't. But there it is. And another one. Oh, it's really delivered. Those, that second one was really delivered. And this time up comes the uppercut. Beautifully timed. And the double leg grab. And a, into a full Boston Crab by Barnes. And he might get a submission for this. He's got it. Barnes the winner by the one submission required. And it's all over. Johnny Quango's headbutts didn't work. Not enough. Well, that is a surprise. That's a turn up for the book, that one. The crowd quite amazed that their hero, Johnny Quango, one of the favorite wrestlers, being beaten. Mike Judd, our MC to announce it. Ladies and gentlemen, in round two, and with the Boston Crab, the one submission required for victory to Bobby Bowne. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure everybody here will give a very big round of applause for Johnny Quango. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to say once again, the winner in round two was Bobby Barnes. But I'm sure you'll give another big hand as he leaves the ring for Johnny Quango. second contest this afternoon is number two on your programs. So may we have the contestants, please? consisting of six five-minute rounds, two falls, two submissions, or a knockout to decide the winner. Between on my right and in the red corner, presented by his manager, gorgeous George. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kendo. His opponent on my left and in the blue corner, the Kung Fu fighter from Worcester, Judo Pete Jerobas. Thank you, Mike Judd. And here we go for our second and main bout of the afternoon's program of six five-minute rounds, two falls to the side. Kendo Nagasaki with his manager, Gorgeous George. There you are. There they are. 
Nagasaki, who hasn't yet, he doesn't uh, wrestle in that for the uninitiated. That comes off and he wrestles in the striped mask. See if we can get a close up of him and his, that, uh, those red eyes of his that often show up red if you're lucky enough to be watching on a color set. Of course, he won't look at us when we want him to. There's the sword being handed out. No ritual today, apparently. Max Ward already warning Curtis George. And Kung Fu Pete Roberts. Waiting patiently to get on with the first round. The crowd, too, waiting patiently to get on with the first round. Second down, first round. Finally, we get ahead. First round of six, two falls to decide it. Nagasaki in the usual mask and, of course, tights and uh, wrestling gear generally. Pete Roberts, Kung Fu and Judo expert. Well, Judo anyway. Kung Fu, he's picked up quite a few moves in Kung Fu since he's been away in Japan and uh, Korea recently. That's why we haven't seen him for so long on the small screen. But it's nice to welcome back Pete Roberts, a great wrestler. And he's got so many different styles, as Pete. Apart from freestyle wrestling, he uses his judo quite a bit. He's a judo black belt. And now he's just come back from Japan and Korea. He really knows a few kung fu moves. I don't think it's uh, ever a hope that we'll see him up against uh, kung fu, the wrestler, because uh, he's much heavier. He's 14 stone seven. Giving away about... Uh, 10 pounds to Nagasaki here this afternoon. <laughs> so head scissors now, Nagasaki. Max Ward, the referee, is going to have to watch a bit closely on this one, I reckon. Not that there'll be any trouble from Pete Roberts. Uh, the great sportsman he is. He doesn't need to bend the rules at all. Nagasaki going for that uh, backhammer from the top. Opposite arm is to leave it back slowly to get the shoulder press. Nagasaki getting up a little fast there, but it didn't last, did it? Roberts threatening that double sharp there, double handed sharp. If that lands right, it could be Curtis for Nagasaki. Just two minutes left in this round one. And a great fine attempt there by Peter Roberts. I think he's doing it much good at the moment because that side headlock's still on. Well, maybe it helps get him out of it. Pull on body check, but he almost followed up there. Again, the side head chantry to Nagasaki. I think he's vainly trying to turn it into a grovet here, but he can't do it. Back to the chantry underneath there. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Quite illegal that last shot. Less than a minute now in round one. And 
Roberts coming in with the chops here. And the hair hold. <laughs> you want a better expression? That's thrown by the hair, that was. And now it's Max Ward going for Pete Roberts, retaliating. Half a minute. Roberts willing to agree to a single figure into lock there, but Nagasaki backs out. They agree to a double. And it's a straight arm lift position for Nagasaki. There's six seconds to go. All this after the bell. Pete Roberts gets posted head first after the bell. And now he's pretty mad. Yeah, he can't wait to get out. Going with round two here. Bit angry now, Roberts. But he's only got about three seconds to wait. Second round, round two. Round two, five to go, no score. Two falls, two submissions or a knockout to decide this winner. Kendo Nagasaki at 15 stone three. Pete Roberts at 14 seven. Roberts, of course, in the normal wrestling trunks with a white stripe down the side and his initials on the front. We'll see in a minute. Roberts really going with that uh, chancery there. And the fall with a back elbow on the throat. And again, the hair this time, Nagasaki. And an excellent posting there by him. But he attacked too early, says referee Max Ward, and therefore a, a severe warning, a reprimand. And a public warning for that attack on the ropes. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee has given his first public warning to Kendo Nagasaki. And with that public warning to Kendo Nagasaki, he throws Roberts again, this time legally, and Roberts out on our table. Going around to find the steps to climb back in again. And that's what the crowd think of Kendo Nagasaki. Oh, yeah, it's getting Nagasaki out, too. Oh, oh, on the apron. Quite illegal, so it's got to be a public warning to Roberts for doing that. Fighting outside the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, in round two, the referee has given his first public warning to judo Pete Roberts. Well, there's Roberts really angry now. I seldom you see Roberts lose his cool. The crowd are right with him. Slot in Edmonton and London would very much like to see Peter Roberts bring this one off. Oh, I hope Roberts doesn't land one of those. 
for Nagasaki's sake. Just a minute left now in the second. One public warning each, but although no score. That's what quite a turn in this time. Just half a minute left on Nagasaki really taking over. Robert's clean that work beautifully. Oh, that worked so neatly. And waiting for that inside hand shot again. And a posting that didn't quite come off, and Nagasaki comes back with the impetus of the posting. And almost on the bell now as that knee comes up once again. Kendo Nagasaki, this man who uh, has been after the British title for so long, but nobody's sure he's British. Gorgeous George, his manager there with him, with the makeup there, assures me that he's, uh, he should be able to have a go at the title, and he, one day he'll have his mask off in order to prove that he is. Second down, round the three. Well, maybe it's today. We'll see as we... Continue with round three, four rounds to go. No score, but one public warning each. And how Nagasaki has got away with just one public warning, I don't know. Still no further public warning, just a definite private one. Nagasaki fingers were really in the mouth, that would be surely another public warning. The referee not sure. There's a man on the ropes all this time. But this time Roberts caught the foot beautifully. Now, single leg Boston Roberts. Can he get over? Can he get that left leg of his over the back? He's got it anyway. First submission to Roberts in the third. Just two minutes gone in round three. The first fall, a submission fall to Pete Roberts over Nagasaki. That made the crowd very happy indeed. But there's three rounds to go, and Gorgeous George may be complaining to the referee. In fact, he should be considering himself very lucky that his man Nagasaki has not got more than one public warning yet. Gorgeous George has got to go, and Nagasaki has got to restart. Roberts can't wait to get at him to try that same leg.
Illegal there. Illegal use of the top rope. And a second public warning for it. Ladies and gentlemen, in round four, the referee is giving his second and final public warning to Pete Roberts. I don't think I've ever seen Pete Roberts in the ring before when he's got two public warnings, let alone against a man like Nagasaki. But he has today. And Nagasaki's right leg worrying him now. If Roberts can get at it quick, he might just get the second fall and make it a 2-0 win for him. He's got it. If Roberts is not careful, he'll, he'll get uh, disqualified. He hasn't got any more public warnings to go. And the mask almost off, but Nagasaki trying to cover his face in case he comes above the nose. And the Roberts turning on the referee there. Crowd coming to ringside, hoping to see that mask off. And Roberts going out, now how well has he landed? Didn't look too good. Tried to make it on his feet, but I'm afraid he didn't. And he may not make it. He's out. He's out. He got the first fall, but it's a knockout to Nagasaki in the fourth. And not a good landing by Pete Roberts on the floor then. It's obvious that Kung Fu fighter Pete Roberts couldn't beat anybody, let alone the only unbeaten wrestler left in the world. Mighty Mask Mysterious and Victorious Nagasaki! Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pete Roberts having failed to beat the count, the winner, Kendo Nagasaki! And having done that, sir, why not a crack at the championship? Why not a crack at the man that he's beaten before and he can beat again, Tony Sinclair? This man is the rightful heavyweight champion of Great Britain! Ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gorgeous George says that Kendo Nagasaki has already defeated Tony Sinclair, the British champion, so why can't he have a crack? Beat anybody with them kind of tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, as P. Roberts, as P. Roberts says, so rightly says, you can defeat anybody with the sort of tactics you just employed. Oh, yeah. Favorite Steve Vidor. I haven't seen him for quite a time. Steve Vidor, 
Uh, now of Wallingham, but formerly of Ellesmere Port. 15 stone one, Mark Rocco of Manchester, 13-6. And of course, as you probably know, grappling fans Mark Rocco took the heavy middleweight title off Burt Royal recently. <laughs> Burt Royal had a pretty long as the title holder in the heavy middleweight division. In fact, more than 3,000 fa 3, fans packed into Bellevue, in, which is Rocco's hometown, of course, to see the contest for which Rocco had trained down, especially to make the 13 stone five pound limit. <laughs> so Mark Rocco, who missed the light heavyweight title, the vacant crown taken by Marty Jones. We probably saw that on television because it was a great bout. Mark Rocco, now the heavy middleweight title holder of Great Britain, but he missed the light heavy. Side headlock now to Rocco. Rocco, of course, easily distinguishable there. His name right across his front, stars all the way down the side. Curious gear he wears, but very sharp, very slick. And a very, very slick wrestler. But I don't think we've ever seen him on television against a man of quite Steve Vito's weight. 15 stone one, Rocco at 13, six, and David. He's only just in the heavy middleweight bracket. the man in the ropes whose man was, was down and we are not happy about that and we don't blame him typical Rocco trick six five minute rounds one fall decides this so the first fall is the one that matters full on body check Vito quite happy to go into it, but he came out worst. Rocco's so quick. Not that Vito's any slouch, but he really is quick, this boy Rocco. Vito went into that superbly. A couple of minutes to go in this first round of six. Just one fall as the... Vito never, I don't think, quite settled yet at all. He's not used to the speed against him as fast as round one. Unhappy and doesn't like very much the treatment he's getting from Rocco, coming a little too quick, but he's not off the deck yet. So a side headlock to Vito, countered there by the double handed face bar, temporarily. And again. Just a minute left in this first. One, two. And Rocco doing One, very well against the heavier man at the moment. One. Nice bridge out of trouble by Vito there. It's time he started using the strength holds. Not first time.
the bell now, by one. And Vida taking over as the bell goes. Vida still pretty angry about some of the treatment he got from uh, Rocco in that first round. And can't blame him. The referee trying to intervene without delivering too many public warnings too early. I uh, can't quite catch what he said there, but he's certainly complaining. Second goal, round two. Round two, five to go. Choppy intended. <laughs> Still, Vito hasn't really started the strength holes. Now, maybe he comes. Using his weight now. And it's about time. That uh, quite unnecessary and a public warning for it. Two, ladies and gentlemen, the first public warning to Mark Rocco. See how quickly Rocco follows it down. Great move. He didn't leave go at all then. He didn't release. Followed down to the Left turn anchor. There it is. Oh, yeah. Well, he asked for it. He got a bit too near the ropes. And the referee says, OK, let it go. Rocco started the illegal moves. Rocco complaining now about Vida's treatment. He's only just a little retaliation naturally allowed. He started it in that first round. Body scissors now, Vida. Just what's happening in front there, but he's, Vito is tearing for the ropes there because there was something little dicey going on the front there, very hard to tell, and I'm not sure the ref knows, but Vito knows, and he's really angry, and in come the punches, the first punch to Vito, public one. There are a few public warnings flying around this afternoon. That's the sixth so far today. I've never seen you like it. <laughs> Vito getting very definitely warned now, but privately after that public warning. Reminded, not too much of that. But he's only retaliating. That's all Vito has done so far. He's just coming back with the same treatment. Oh, oh, the ref got that one. Quite unintentional, I'm sure, but Vito delivered that inside of the arm shot, and the referee caught it on the side of his head. That was a, surely a punch, that first one. Vito gone really angry, and he's got a second public warning for that. This is not the Vito we know at all, but Mark Rocco is back, Vito is out.
Ladies and gentlemen, the referee has given a second and final public warning to Steve Vidor. Well, how about this? Two public warnings against Pete Roberts in the last bout, and now two against Vidor, two of the most sporting men in the business. Half a minute to go in this third, the second round, sorry, second round. And most of the bout seems to be going on outside the ring in this one, too. Vito's on his way out if he continues that. Rocco, not happy with his landing, but it's, it's an illegal move that put him there, so therefore it doesn't worry him too much. He doesn't have to hurry. He's, the bell any second anyway. So, this is a different Steve Vito, the one we used to, but Mark Rocco, of course, who started it all, we expect it from him, Rollerball Rocco from Manchester. And complaining about the butt uh, or the punch of the head, which I thought the referee took most of. Second round, round three. Round three, four rounds to go, one fall to decide this bout. Steve Vito at heavyweight, 15-1 versus Mark Rocco at heavy middle, 13 stone six. Rocco in the white boots and the wrestling gear, the stars down the side there. In fact, both men actually old, dressed in yellow here this afternoon, which is sad. If you're lucky enough to have a color television set, but they look white on my monitor. <laughs> Nicely timed back elbow, but Vito, okay, not stopped himself by the bottom rope. <laughs> nice drop kick, that's more to Steve Vito, we know. Great timing. And Rocco a bit mad with that one. Walks into a forearm smash. Oh, yes, good forearm. We were out, but not too badly. Oh, that was a dicey one, too. But blind side of the ref looks very dicey. And beat her out again over the top. Let's see how he landed this time. He's getting counted, so it was a perfectly legal move to put him there. Good body check and Rocco out through the bottom two. There's more of the boat going outside the ring than there is in here this afternoon. It's quite incredible. Oh, nice to take him over the top for a side press. Yes, he's got it. Rocco won't like that, but it was a beautiful side press. Lovely folder. Vito the winner by the one four required. The British heavy middleweight champion, Mark Rollerball-Rocco. Thank you, Mike. And with that, we hope you enjoyed this rather unusual afternoon's wrestling from Edmonton. Goodbye from all of us here, and have a good week. Side headlock Barnes. Turn to the opposite side, but still the same. Oh, yes.
Yes, turned too far that time. Lions let the head go, but he gets the cat's head in there. Figure four. That's just there. A little bit late on that move. And lucky to get a second by the chair. that so often to his opponents. I'm surprised Barnes uh, hasn't spotted that before. Wasn't the least suspicious of it. I'm not sure he's taken him Kurt Weasel on before, actually, on television. Top two ropes by himself, but didn't like it too much. It's much easier to get help from the referee when they get caught. Uh, depending on how powerful those ropes are, different in each ring. Just a minute left in round two. Barnes going for an arm lock now. That arm lock really laid on, but it's with the joint at the moment. Now back against the joint. <laughs> Half a minute left. <laughs> so whatever he does, Kurt Weasel in trouble from that uh, arm lock. He's got about seven seconds. I think actually he was just about out of that on the bell. But Bobby Barnes over in his corner. Well, he's taking quite a time getting back there. Bobby Barnes from Lewisham, 13 stone eight of Bobby. You remember the famous tag team, the Hells Angels, along with Avian Street. It's the partner of Avian Street, but since Avian Street left the business, Bobby Barnes is a solo wrestler now. Round three. And at the, at the start of round three, with four rounds to go, here at the Fairfield Hall Croydon, in this packed house, it's been booked solid for a couple of weeks now. Bobby Barnes versus Cat Weasel is our preliminary contest. Six five-minute rounds, four to go, and two falls, two submissions or a knockout to decide. Barnes in the plain trunks. And Cat Weasel back to canvas now, and the curious stripe gear of his, the long blonde hair and the beard. Which we'll be able to see there. Referee Max Ward. Hasn't had too much trouble with his bout, but he's going to have a little trouble now. He wouldn't break when told. but Barnes not so happy about that particular move. <laughs> Barnes tries it, but nothing to get hold of, really. <laughs> nice turn, that's Barnes' skill. Beautiful leg hack there, very neatly done. Into a figure four leg lock. Barnes with right back to the ropes now. He's got that figure four leg lock on really hard. And now could 
get his first score from this submission possible. <laughs> Quite determined to try. Released the figure four, but it's just a question of whether the cat can get up there, push his man backwards, lose balance. Not so far. <laughs> Bobby Barnes said, do you mind moving your hand? And Kevin just said, not at all. And he did. Couple of minutes to go in the third. Now's the figure four. Beautiful one there. That's Barnes with the uh, short arm scissors and from the figure four elbow. Beautiful done. Now, that reason could be in prolonged trouble here. This he figures a way to get out of this. Not an easy hole to get out of at all. And he's got an angle on it. In fact, he's hurting Barnes with the counter. So maybe he's on the way to making Barnes release. Yes, and a figure four leg lock. Beautifully done by Pat Weasel. Very seldom you can see that operate. And Barnes under the bottom rope on the counter. Thank you. 